For the last few years, I've worn an old 4-inch wafer like this to conferences or whenever I'm teaching in person. People rarely get to handle a wafer and they're always interested to know more. While it's a fantastic conversation starter, the problem with this necklace is it's too hip-hop and not in a $15 million Nikon lithography stepper. To resolve this annoyance, I decided to make the most ridiculous ASIC bling possible, using my own chips of course. The only thing I kept from the old design was the quick-release wafer. A project like this needs a great team, and I got lucky with Pat Deegan and Adam Zalouf helping out on the electronics and the CAD. I started with some concept sketches in August 2023. I always prefer paper and pen for the first sketches, much faster for me than working with a computer. The challenging part was making strong, flexible, conductive and most importantly, good looking links. After a few iterations, we decided on gold anodized CNC aluminium links held between sandwiches of black PCBs. The top PCB acts as a decorative light diffuser, while the bottom PCB holds the LED and passes the signal around the chain. Adam did the design with Onshape, a web-based CAD tool. I was able to view the design, give feedback and make measurements all inside my browser. We realised that the edges of the PCB sandwiches wouldn't look great. So Adam designed a spacer that holds the top and bottom PCBs apart while covering the sides of the boards. The bottom boards have a surface mount soldered nut and the top board is screwed on with some nice, low profile machine head bolts. The spacers are black nylon printed with multi-jet fusion, a technique that results in an industrial look and feel. Adam used this technique a lot when he worked at Boston Dynamics. I knew I wanted something that represented a MOSFET as they're fundamental to all my chip design so far. I also like the idea of showing a simplified circuit diagram that represented the electronics hidden inside the chain. I was really struggling to come up with a design that I was happy with, but finally, Adam came up with something that was proportional to the link, looked good, and connected a three pin device to four symmetric wires. Yes, yes, I know MOSFETs are four pin devices. No, no, I couldn't get it to look good in the space we had. Some artistic license was taken. LED diffusion is crucial to a high-class blinky. Pat did some testing with the LEDs to see how they diffuse through the PCB. We measured the diameter of the light hitting some layers of paper held over the LED and used that for the diameter of the logo. We blocked the light by covering everything outside the logo with copper, draped the copper with the mattest of matte black solder mask and topped it all off with stunning gold-plated traces. The chips I used were extremely rare, an exclusive 2022 vintage we submitted to eFabless Chip Ignite. Unlike my first ASIC, it doesn't contain a WS2812 LED driver, so for the LEDs I went with the easier to drive APA102s. I used the chip's onboard VexRisk RISC-V processor to bitbang the LEDs. For the schematic, we started with Pat's minimal viable ASIC board. It's a template schematic that includes all you need to boot a Chip Ignite or Google-funded MPW lottery chip. To customise it for the necklace, we added a couple of buttons and some decorative stripes that serve double duty as capacitive touch sensors. Pat did some very nice work on estimating power usage on the LEDs, and that helped us size the battery. The APA102's datasheet said applied voltage 5V volt DC, but we run them direct from the LiPo's lower voltage and they work fine. We went with a 400 milliamp hour battery and that only lasts for a measly two hours. Always prepared, I keep a couple of batteries in my back pocket and swap them over when no one's looking. I wanted to debut the necklace at Hackaday Supercon and we very nearly didn't make it. With just 24 days to go before the conference, we finally started ordering parts. Aluminium links from Runes Metal on the 14th, plastics from somewhere on the 22nd, PCBs from PCBWay on the 25th, and parts from Adafruit and DigiKey on the 25th, and nobody sponsoring this video or the necklace. Aluminium links and plastics arrived on the 31st and fitted well. Esden and Timon recommended Runes Metal after they did the beautiful case for White Quarks Glasgow. The PCBs went out for delivery on the 30th, but nobody actually showed up to deliver them. Thankfully, they arrived on the 31st and Pat pulled an all-nighter getting high on solder fumes to get it done before leaving for LA. We got lucky everything arrived in time. We cut it so close it was tighter than two MOSFETs in an AND gate. Looking back, a bit more project planning would have been helpful. It wasn't clear to us that we wouldn't be able to order the PCBs until we basically had everything else finalised. 
Pat and I arrived in LA before Adam, and we tried plugging the links together for the first time and writing a quick firmware to control the lights. Amazingly, it all works, but the update rate of the LEDs was extremely slow. I decided to keep it simple with a solid green and a cold beer. As a future upgrade, I plan to animate the LEDs using one of the chip's ring oscillators to change the animation with the temperature. After my tiny tape-out workshop finished at the conference, Adam arrived and we tried fitting it all together for the first time. It came together really well, very good for a first assembly and also the first time we'd all worked together as a team. I'd like to pretend I knew it was all going to work first time, but in my experience it's rarely the case. At a princely 500 grams, it's a lot heavier than my previous necklace. It took some time to get used to wearing it, but now my neck's boxed out, I'm okay. You might think I stood out, but the cons blinky game was so strong I blended right in. So thanks for watching the video, and if you ever see me at a conference, please come over and ask me for a closer look at my wafer.